الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem after a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim qala subhana wal asr inna al-insana lafi khusr illa al-ladhina amanu wa amalu al-salihati wa tawasu bil-haqqi wa tawasu bil-sabr Allah tabarak wa ta'ala swears by the time and he says wal asr you know by the time all of mankind is in a loss. Then he makes istithna. Except those who believe. That means that the ones who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they practice righteous deeds. That they are the istithna, they are the, uh, or mustethni, that these ones are those who are the, are the exception to the rule. They are the exception to the rule, which the base rule, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the beginning, when he said, well, asr inna l-insana lafi khusr, that all of mankind is in a loss. So these are the ones who are not in a loss. They are the ones who have gained. Why do they have gained? Because they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are believers in Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And they do righteous deeds. And they call to the truth. And they are patient. So they're patient upon that path of the haqq. And really the point of mentioning Surah Al-Asr, this beautiful Quranic surah chapter, is that the shahid here was to mention the Ahl Iman have patience, and that patience is important with regards to our Iman. And that patience is a part of our Iman. Meaning that the Mu'min must be patient. And more specifically, I wanted to mention that in relation to being patient with our elders. That we have to be patient that oftentimes when we deal with our elders due to their age and being set in their ways, that we have to be patient upon that path. And that even we should do our best to avoid argumentation. That even when we are correct or something is correct, something is the haq, it is not always necessary to speak and try to uh, force the argument, especially when someone is set on something. That yes, you give them the truth, you, but you must do so in a very gentle way and not in a way to cause anger and enmity and disrespect to your elders. So this is advice to myself and my brothers and sisters in Islam. And one of the ways that we know this, especially when, we, when it comes to our parents, when dealing with our beloved parents, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and he's uh, mentioned this along with Tawheed, along with uh, monotheism, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you, وَقَضَى رَبُّكُمْ And your Lord has ordered you, commanded you 
Allah ta'budu illa iyahu that you should not worship anything or anyone except him wabil walidaini ihsana and to the parents be uh have ihsan and this ihsan it's uh in an all encompassing word for goodness and respect and obedience to one's parents and so it's very important that we realize the importance in the status of our elders and that we are respectful even if sometimes it requires a different type of patience and a type of humbling oneself in order to avoid conflict and discord with the parents because they have a status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them which is a status which is a status of respect and manzil, that they have great status and they have uh, a, a place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed them in, in a status that is a status of respect. And it's a status in which we should be obedient to our parents. And it's a, a level of, at times... That not that you agree on battle. This is never the case. We don't say, oh, my parents are mushriks and they are commanding me to shirk. I should follow shirk. La, abedin. But however, if you have already made clear for them the truth, then there's no sense in fighting and battling if this is going to cause their blood pressure to raise. If this is going to cause them to hate you and cut you off. But rather... Sometimes you know that it's better to shift the conversation. And all of that comes with hikmah. That comes with wisdom. And wisdom, ahabatifillah, is that you know how to put everything in its rightful place. How to put everything in perspective, in essence. So that, for example, you have called them to Tawheed. And you know that your elder is set on being a, uh, uh, a very stern Christian or stern Jew or stern uh, Buddhist. And you know that by touching on the subject that you guys are going to battle or that the battle has begun, you've begun to argue then it is better to shift the conversation and say to them, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَ دين. You know, to me is my religion is to, and to you is your religion. And that is out of respect. But I just want to share with you that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. That we don't need to worship Jesus. We don't need to go through Buddha. We don't need to go through uh, any other give divinity to anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's ways, and that is, that's from hikmah, that's from wisdom. So I just wanted to share this very important uh, piece of advice on how to be wise with one's elders when dealing with these types of topics. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.